massive contradictions surround the value of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is sometimes referred to as digital gold. For many people, 2017 was the year that many people first heard the word cryptocurrency. Everyone from forestry workers to Uber drivers was talking about trading the new investment, usually Bitcoin. The currency's value rose exponentially over the year, as traders boasted about doubling their money and quitting their jobs on the strength of it. A problem for Bitcoin is that it's hard to use. So far, this year has been more turbulent. Bitcoin hit a price peak of 17,000 US dollars, 23,416 per coin in January, but had fallen to 6,998 US dollars by early February. On Tuesday, it was worth 9,480 US dollars, and $12,861. Although Bitcoin is still off its late 2017 peak, the price appreciation would be nothing to sniff at if you had bought this time a year ago, when a coin was worth less than 1,000 US dollars. Bitcoin could be overtaken by another form of cryptocurrency. Now, on the question of where it's from here, pundits are split. Internet security expert John McAfee says the price will reach 1 million US dollars by the end of 2020. But investment bank Goldman Sachs is warning that most cryptocurrencies' values will hit zero. What could push the price back up, and higher? In New Zealand, one of the biggest proponents of Bitcoin is Sam Blackmore, founder of MeBitcoin Saver, which allows people to convert small amounts of money to Bitcoin on a regular basis. He said for many New Zealanders, it was hard to understand some of the attraction of Bitcoin. But in countries with more unstable economies or less well-regulated financial systems, a cryptocurrency that operated independently of the bank could have strong appeal. He said take-up was high in places such as Venezuela or Argentina. If a country suffered serious inflation due to political unrest, as Zimbabwe had in the late 1990s, having money in a cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin would be one way to protect its value, he said. Billions of people around the world did not have bank accounts. I see Bitcoin as an opportunity for all the people who are unbanked in the world. Blackmore said Bitcoin had not increased in price unreasonably. To get to 1 million US dollars, Bitcoin would need to grow 0.484095703431026044% per day from when McAfee made his prediction in the middle of last year. That would take it to 6,369 US dollars now, 4,000 US dollars lower than its actual price, despite the volatility. Blackmore said it was fair to compare Bitcoin to gold, which has a market capitalization of about 7.8 trillion US dollars compared to Bitcoin's 484 billion US dollars. It's digital gold. There's a rarity to it. That's why people compare it to gold. There's a limit of 21 million Bitcoin. That finite number of Bitcoin that will enter circulation meant even a small slice of Bitcoin would always have value, he said. It's a funny thing to have something that's actually precious on your phone. Every bit of Bitcoin is very precious. People are starting to appreciate that now. Blackmore said people who could not understand the value of Bitcoin were approaching it with a mindset owned by the financial markets. But he said it was better viewed as a technological innovation, not financial. Tech people grasp it easily. Financial people try to compare it to stuff they know and can't get their heads around it. Fred Skibesta, co-founder of financial comparison site Finder, said Bitcoin had been through dips over the past nine years, but had always risen again. He said some of the hurdles that were cited to its price appreciation, such as transaction speeds, were being worked on. The currency was buoyed by its cult-like status with a band of true believers. Anything that has that really cult-like following, regardless of whatever happens, it tends to survive. Bitcoin was seen as an overnight success, he said, but it had been growing for nine years. It's an ongoing continuous thing. Central bank moves to set up their own cryptocurrencies were not a threat, but were acknowledgement of the place of cryptocurrencies, he said. Cristiano Belavitis a lecturer of innovation and entrepreneurship at the University of Auckland Business School, said more market acceptance of Bitcoin would push its price up. He said the Bitcoin market was still small with daily transactions of only about 10 billion US dollars, which is the same as one big company trading in the US market. 
a small market can be influenced by big players. If they started selling Bitcoin to each other the price would go up through market manipulation. Anything can happen. What could send it to zero? Balavitas says it's much more likely that the price will go to zero. International efforts to regulate cryptocurrencies could have a big impact. There had already been attempts such as China's to shut down exchanges and websites, limiting people's ability to trade cryptocurrencies. China is targeting online platforms and apps that offer exchange services and the government plans to block access. Balavitas said, although people claimed that cryptocurrencies couldn't be controlled, that was untrue. If it's illegal to accept Bitcoin or the government blocks websites and banks limit the possibilities to buy Bitcoin with your credit card, what can you do? University of Auckland associate professor in the Department of Commercial Law Alex Sims said the government could say that banks had to close accounts of anyone trading cryptocurrencies or stop people accepting crypto payments. Bitcoin is not anonymous at all. It's quite easy to track who's got what. If you transact at your home on your Wi-Fi it shows your IP address. Commentators point to the dot-com bubble of the late 1990s as an indicator of what can happen. Many investors lost money as companies that looked like surefire winners in the new online environment, such as Pets.com and Edoys.com, fell by the wayside. Few companies that existed then went on to be successful in future decades. Google had only just been formed. And while there is a limit to how many Bitcoin can go into circulation, there's no limit to how many new cryptocurrencies might be produced. Another that was easier to use could supersede Bitcoin and wipe out its value. Balavitas said people who assumed the price would keep going up were banking on someone else being willing to pay more for it in future. You don't actually want to own the asset you just want to because you think someone less smart than you will want to buy it in future at a higher price. He said more than half of Bitcoin investors wanted to sell in one to three years. That's speculation and it will change as soon as prices go down. Sims said it was still primitive technology that could not easily be used as a payment mechanism. She said other cryptocurrencies were much better. Something else could always come along, especially if central banks followed through with plans to develop their own cryptocurrencies, she said. Will Bitcoin go to zero? The Bitcoin headlines are still coming in hard and fast, despite a harrowing drop from the December highs of just below $20,000. The sentiment bubble remains intact. But are prices headed even lower? The Bitcoin headlines are still coming in hard and fast, despite a harrowing decline from the December high near $20,000. The sentiment bubble remains intact, even if the price bubble has been somewhat deflated. Consider that 59% of last year's ecos have failed or are failing, encouraging some triumphant I told you so. From skeptics who now leer at quieted Twitter accounts, downed websites and other digital graveyards of those looking to cash in on the boom. This led Goldman Sachs analysts to wonder in a widely circulated research note earlier this month, is Bitcoin a bursting bubble? To be sure, both the Bitcoin bulls and the bears have plenty of support to lean on. There was another recent high-profile theft, with Japanese exchange CoinCheck confirming the loss of more than $500 million worth of digital coins. There was the death of a South Korean regulator looking to crack down on cryptocurrencies. And crypto prices in general seem to be correlated with stock prices and are thus vulnerable to a quickening of monetary policy tightening worldwide. Positives include more governance slash network slash hard fork related progress, with Bitcoin Core rolling out segregated witness SegWit in an effort to correct glaring inefficiencies in the transaction network. The launch of Venezuela's Petro, a state-run oil-backed crypto deployed as a last-ditch effort to avoid defaulting on the country's $60 billion debt, echoing Russian efforts to launch the crypto ruble. And, earlier this week, the purchase by Goldman-backed Circle, a money transfer app, of crypto exchange Poloniex for about $400 million. The future of Bitcoin At the highest level, Goldman's take is that Bitcoin is likely in a bubble that the underlying blockchain technology holds promise, and that Bitcoin and other first-generation cryptocurrencies that are unlikely to survive enjoyed characteristics that were uniquely conducive to the current speculative mania. They view Bitcoin as comparable to the Mosaic web browser and the AltaVista search engine, 
which popularized internet access and search, but eventually lost their first mover advantage to the likes of Netscape and Google. Amazon's recent ability to muscle its way into established areas like streaming television and meal delivery also shows that being first in something is no longer the boon it once was especially with Bitcoin's meteoric price rise late last year revealing structural flaws, including an efficient payment settling, vulnerability of centralized exchanges, anathema to Satoshi Nakamoto's original vision, and the inappropriateness as a means of exchange for day-to-day -day transactions, given the extreme price volatility. Volatility rate of Bitcoin versus other assets. Instead, Bitcoin morphed into a near term store of value powered by far off hopes of widespread adoption and dominance. The technology was vague and amorphous enough that proponents could ascribe near mystical qualities, when the reality today is a hackable, unregulated, shadow banking alternative with a reputation for funding the despicable. And unlike any other commodity, say, oil or gold or Dutch tulips simply cannot react to higher prices by increasing output. When more miners want more Bitcoin, the hash rate will scale difficulty. Thus, the rate at which new Bitcoins are discovered is kept relatively stable at about 75 per hour. But the rush by miners makes the Bitcoin network massively power-hungry, carbon-intensive and, frankly, unsustainable, with its power consumption expected to match current worldwide levels by early 2020. Steve Strongen, head of Goldman Sachs Global Investment Research, warns that institutional investors shouldn't just be asking if Bitcoin is a bubble or has market structure problems, but also whether today's cryptocurrencies will even exist 5 or 10 years from now. His answer, it's possible but not probable, as a better implementation of blockchain technology or a successor to it will play a larger role in the economy. As a result, the cryptocurrencies that don't survive are likely to trade to zero a risk that Strongen believes is broadly underappreciated right now. Any potential Bitcoin 2.0 candidate will need to address the following issues, according to Strongen and his peers at Goldman Sachs, to become a means of exchange, widespread adoption by everyday retailers and service providers would be necessary. The fact that modern fiat currencies, the regulated banking system and current payment processing systems function well and are rapidly innovating, with examples including Apple Pay and Venmo. Overcoming gold's advantages mainly, reputable and secure custodial services as a means of storing wealth outside the banking system. The relative ease of creating altcoins, based on Bitcoin's blockchain platform, which enjoys no intellectual property protections. At the other end of the spectrum, Dan Moorhead, CEO of crypto-focused investor Pontero Capital, believes Bitcoin's fair value could be approximately $500,000, per the Goldman note, based on his estimates of market share capture from areas of disruption, including international money transfers, credit card transactions, gold and other wealth stores, and fiat currencies. But even Moorhead admits there are areas where current blockchain technology is falling short of its objectives and that 90% of the altcoins and ECOs being issued right now will go to zero. His advice? Aggressively diversify to craft a portfolio that will have some losing assets, but also a couple of truly transformative winners. All into $6,998 US dollars by early February. On Tuesday, it was worth 9,480 US dollars, NZ dollar 12,861. Although Bitcoin is still off its late 2017 peak, the price appreciation would be nothing to sniff at if you'd bought this time a year ago, when a coin was worth less than 1,000 US dollars. Bitcoin could be overtaken by another form of cryptocurrency. Now, on the question of where to from here, pundits are split. Internet security expert John McAfee says the price will reach 1 million US dollars by the end of 2020. But investment bank Goldman Sachs is warning that most cryptocurrencies values will hit zero. What could push the price back up and higher? In New Zealand, one of the biggest proponents of Bitcoin is Sam Blackmore, founder of MeBitco and Saver, which allows people to convert small amounts of money to Bitcoin on a regular basis. He said for many New Zealanders, it was hard to understand some of the attraction of Bitcoin. But in countries with more unstable economies or less well-regulated financial systems, 
a cryptocurrency that operated independently of the bank could have strong appeal. He said take-up was high in places such as Venezuela or Argentina. If a country suffered serious inflation due to political unrest, as Zimbabwe had in the late 1990s, having money in a cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin would be one way to protect its value, he said. Billions of people around the world did not have bank accounts. I see Bitcoin as an opportunity for all the people who are unbanked in the world. Blackmore said Bitcoin had not increased in price unreasonably. To get to 1 million US dollars, Bitcoin would need to grow 0.484095703431026044% per day from when McAfee made his prediction in the middle of last year. That would take it to 6,369 US dollars now. 4,000 US dollars lower than its actual price, despite the volatility. Blackmore said it was fair to compare Bitcoin to gold, which has a market capitalization of about 7.8 trillion US dollars compared to Bitcoin's 484 billion US dollars. It's digital gold. There's a rarity to it. That's why people compare it to gold. There's a limit of 21 million Bitcoin. That finite number of Bitcoin that will enter circulation meant even a small slice of Bitcoin would always have value, he said. It's a funny thing to have something that's actually precious on your phone. Every bit of Bitcoin is very precious. People are starting to appreciate that now. Blackmore said people who could not understand the value of Bitcoin were approaching it with a mindset owned by the financial markets. But he said it was better viewed as a technological innovation, not... Massive contradictions surround the value of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is sometimes referred to as digital gold. For many people, 2017 was the year that many people first heard the word cryptocurrency. Everyone from forestry workers to Uber drivers was talking about trading the new investment, usually Bitcoin. The currency's value rose exponentially over the year, as traders boasted about doubling their money and quitting their jobs on the strength of it. A problem for Bitcoin is that it's hard to use. So far, this year has been more turbulent. Bitcoin hit a price peak of 17,000 US dollars, 23,416 per coin in January, but had fought financial. Tech people grasp it easily. Financial people try to compare it to stuff they know and can't get their heads around it. Fred Skibesta, co-founder of financial comparison site Finder said Bitcoin had been through dips over the past nine years, but had always risen again. He said some of the hurdles that were cited to its price appreciation, such as transaction speeds, were being worked on. The currency was buoyed by its cult-like status with a band of true believers. Anything that has that really cult-like following, regardless of whatever happens, it tends to survive. Bitcoin was seen as an overnight success, he said but it had been growing for nine years. It's an ongoing continuous thing. Central bank moves to set up their own cryptocurrencies were not a threat, but were acknowledgement of the place of cryptocurrencies, he said. Cristiano Belavitis, a lecturer of innovation and entrepreneurship at the University